Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I got here for you today is the 35mm f1.8 lens. Now this is a full frame lens, it goes for about $750, and in this review I'm going to go over everything you need to know, including lab testing, real world testing, photo and video, and I really hope you come along with me uh, for the ride, so let's go. Alright, so I'm just going to take it out of the box here. Alright, so we have the lens hood here, pedal design, and here is the lens itself. So this lens is definitely small, and it's very lightweight. It only weighs in at 9.9 .9 ounces or 281 grams. Alright, so you can see here it's got a manual AF-MF switch here and a customizable focus hold button, which is quite nice. It has a very large manual focus ring here which feels really good it's actually very buttery smooth i wasn't expecting it to be this smooth it also comes with a pinch style lens hood here i'll show you the front and you can see the aperture diaphragm in there which is a nine blade circular aperture diaphragm it's also a 55 millimeter filter thread if you want to get filters for this like nd filters and so forth and you can see it's got some nice lens coatings on it but nothing crazy it doesn't have the fluorine or the nano ar coatings like some of the more expensive lenses now looking at it from the back side, pretty large chunk of glass there for that Max f1.8 aperture. It does not have a rubber gasket on the back like the recent 20mm f1.8 G lens I just reviewed, but it does still have a dust and moisture resistant design per Sony. The minimum focus distance on this lens is about 8.7 inches or 22 centimeters, so you can really get very close to your subject which is great for close-up photography you know and with that fast f1.8 aperture you're going to get good low light performance and also killer separation from the background as i will show you in a moment all right let me mount this up to the a7 III here and you just line up the white dot to the white dot on the mount and there you have it so that's what she looks like mounted to the a7 III you can see it's fairly small and compact. That's what it looks like with the lens hood. That's what it looks like from this side. All right, so looking at some of the real world photos, I went down to the green bridge and here's just a landscape shot off the bridge. And this is a raw file. You could see the EXIF data up here. I was actually shooting at F1.8 for this particular shot. And I just wanted to show you quickly what I would normally do just to enhance this raw file. And I would enable the lens profile correction. I would also add a medium contrast tone curve. And then I would scroll up. I would drag the vibrance up just a little bit and maybe the clarity just a little bit, something like that. Then I would just crop it really quick just to level it off a little, it looks a little crooked to my eye. So something along those lines. Now, what I wanted to show you up here was the fringing. Notice the purple fringing in this extremely high contrast area. Quite a bit of purple there. And I just wanna show you how you can correct that. If you go into the lens correction profile and then click on manual here, you can then click this little eyedropper tool, go out there to this spot, and there you can see the fringing. You just click that, and it's pretty much gone. See that? Gone. So that is a flaw of this lens for sure, but it is easily correctable. So I just wanted to make you guys aware of that, that the lens does suffer from the fringing in the high contrast corners at f1.8 in particular, but it is fixable in Lightroom very easily, just so you know. All right, so here's another angle looking down, and I was just looking at the railing, and if I zoom in here, you can see that sharpness detail is really good. Very good. And here's just a bolt sticking out there. Here's another angle. 
And I just took a picture towards my tripod here. So you can see the depth of field fall off is, is pretty awesome. Full frame camera, f1.8, 35 millimeter. Renders really nice. And here's just a shot looking up. I was looking up at through one of the beams. I thought this one came out pretty good. And here's just what it looks like at the minimum focus distance. I put the camera down on the deck of the bridge and I focused on the bolt there. And here's what it looks like focused on the background from the same exact position. And here's just focused about three feet away. So you can see that depth of field play you can get with this 35 millimeter f1.8 lens on the full frame Sony a7 III. Now here I just took a couple of snapshots of me using the image, Imaging Edge mobile app. I have a tutorial on how to use that if you want, so I was remote controlling the camera. And as you can see, I'm really starting to get fat and also turn gray here. I got a nice gray hair coming in, but otherwise, you know, you can see the sharpness is pretty darn good. And then I'm just doing the thinker pose. And uh, there you have it. So here's just a shot looking down, and I stopped her down to f5.6 for this one, and you can see the clarity and detail on the green, and the bolt is, is just excellent. Just a couple more shots here looking through the railing, and here's just a lock on the railing, another depth of field play type shot. And let me just show you what it looks like without the lens correction here, so you can see how there's very, very little distortion. You see that? I used manual focus for this particular shot, and I just focused on the weed here so you can see just how incredibly narrow the depth of field is on a lens like this when you're at the minimum focus distance. It's absolutely remarkable, and it produces some great results, as you can see here. Now, there happened to be some cool farming equipment here, like a corn husker. I don't even know what you call this thing, a combine maybe. Here's some detail shots so you can see the corn in there. It's got this cool auger mechanism, it's got some gears there, and I thought this corkscrew rendered pretty nice with that depth of field fall off. And here's what the front of it looks like, so it can just drive along and scoop up the uh, corn and just rip it off. And there's a cob. And look at the point of this thing, it's pretty nasty looking. <laughs> now here's where the corn gets sucked into the unit. Here's another look at the front of that point, and it kind of looks like the front of a boot of a really bad guy back in the day, how they had those metal tipped boots. And here is the Turbo 8820 John Deere machine. I'm not, again, I'm not sure if this is a combine or you would just call it a tractor, but it's obviously a weird looking machine. So I just focused on the weeds here in front of the machine so you can see how that rendered. And I thought that looked really cool. And here's a shot focused on the Turbo 8820 through the weeds, so you can see what that looks like. And this is just under the bridge. Now I found these cool metal sculptures I've taken pictures before in previous reviews, and I just went to visit now. These are getting a little older, so there's a little bit more detail on these guys from the rust and whatnot. And I thought that these shots came out fantastic. I love the way the 35 millimeter view of the world renders on a full frame camera. It's, it's awesome and it allows you to get really cool shots like this. I particularly love it so I was very impressed with the results of these particular real world shots. Look at his foot here. I love these uh, sculptures from Zach Max. He does a great job. There's another one. Look at this guy. I mean that's just incredible. You can see the detail is exceptional on this color clarity I mean just fantastic just more of a close-up here and a few detail shots and then me and Jace we were working on this Lego car the other day uh, the McLaren F1 pretty awesome so I just wanted to show you a minimum focus distance test here now one thing I did notice is the green ring around these bouquet balls I also noticed that on the 24 millimeter f1.4 GM lens had that same phenomenon so I just wanted to point that out there in this particular shot this toy is only about five inches across in actual size so I'm just really close to it and uh, these shots came out really good I thought
I'm just using the on-camera mic here, but I gotta tell you, this came out unbelievable. So you have to watch me eat a piece, of course. I'm just dipping it in this killer sauce. Mmm. It's like an onion garlic cream sauce. Ribeye. It's the best steak. Alright guys, let's get into the lab and see what this can do. As you can see, I'm about eight and a half inches away from the quarter, or approximately 22 centimeters. And looking at the photos here in Lightroom, this is what the capture looks like. So you can see this is how big the quarter is at that minimum focus distance. So when zoomed into one to one, this is what it looks like. And you can see the sharpness and detail at f1.8 is pretty darn good. Now you can see up here on the top left the EXIF data, just so you're aware. Now if I go to two to one, and look a little bit closer in the high contrast areas, there is a little bit of fringing at wide open f1.8. So let's stop her down to f2.8 and see what it looks like there. And you can see most of the purplish fringing went away. And now at f4, I can see a little bit increase in sharpness compared to f1.8 and f2.8, so that makes sense. Lenses get sharper when you stop them down in general. f5.6, you can see here it's looking pretty darn good, but I am starting to see some octagoning on the bouquet balls there. Here at f4, they are still really round. At f5.6, however, you can see they're starting to octagon a little bit. So let's go to f8, and now you can really see the octagoning effect that you get. But the sharpness is really exceptionally good at f8 here in this minimum focus distance test. And just to show you, here's what f11 looks like. Here's what F16 looks like. All right, so moving back from the quarter quite a bit here, I wanted to try to get a better shot of the entire lab scene. So you can see corner sharpness detail and things like that, color rendition. And these are raw quality straight off the camera, by the way, just so you know. I did not make any adjustments whatsoever. These are straight off the camera. So I do want to show you what it'll look like with the lens profile enabled. And you can see here, when I enable the lens profile at f1.8, it pretty much takes care of the vignette, that darkening in the corners you can see kind of goes away and there is a very little bit of distortion but not much at all. Distortion control is very good on this lens. All right, so here's what the sharpness looks like. I do still see a little bit of purple fringing here on this high contrast chrome, but I don't see any on the coins down here. So that's interesting and just worth noting. So you can see all the way here in the corner, the sharpness is very, very good. And the detail is also exceptionally good. You can see all the little individual hairs on the pipe cleaner things here. Same thing with the crayons, the paper on the crayons. You could see that detail. I'm really impressed with the results here on this lens, guys, at f1.8, looking at the lab scene. And again, you can see how nice the background bouquet renders. Really smooth, creamy. And I'm just going to stop her down. f2.8. F4. I'll just zoom in here quick so you can see what it looks like at F4. And you can see it did sharpen up a little bit. F5.6. I'll just zoom in again here so you can see. This is pretty much going to be the peak sharpness area for this lens. And it is definitely sharper at F5.6. You can see the details on the hair on the fiber here are even better and more crisp. Same thing with the circuit board. It's just a little bit more crisp, a little more detail. And here's F8, here's F11, F16, and F22. And you can see at F22, you do definitely get a noticeable loss in sharpness due to diffraction. F16, however, is looking pretty darn good. F11 is also very sharp, and F8 is exceptionally sharp. All right, guys, so overall, I would say the Sony 35mm f1.8 lens is a good lens. It has good build quality. The image quality that comes off of it is pretty good. It's very lightweight and compact, which is a really key feature to this particular lens is the lightweight and compact size. The cost is a little bit high, in my opinion, at $750. So this lens does suffer from a little bit of fringing in the high contrast areas, as you saw in, on the quarter in the lab testing, and also in the trees the branches on the high contrast sky in the corner there. It's fairly easily correctable in Lightroom though, so it's not the biggest deal in the world, but other lenses, you know, don't have that, like better quality lenses like the GM lenses, the G lenses. That 20 millimeter f1.8 lens I just reviewed, for example, was absolutely phenomenal, and it had zero fringing when it came to shots like that, just as a comparison, so you do get something for that G badge when a lens has it. This lens doesn't have it, and you know, that's why there's some fringing there. 
So it, it just is what it is. There are other options out there for 35 millimeter, like the Sigma 35 millimeter F1.4 lens, which is currently going for about $700 at the time of this review. And now it is definitely gonna be heavier. It doesn't have as good of a minimum focus distance, but you're getting the faster F1.4 aperture and exceptionally good image quality on that particular optic as well. And then you have the Sony 35 millimeter F1.4 Zeiss lens, which goes for about $1,600. It's like double the price of this lens. And that's also big and heavy, but it's an exceptionally phenomenal lens. I reviewed that lens and it really is amazing. The other option you got is the 35 millimeter F2.8 Zeiss lens, which is very compact and lightweight, but that also goes for around $800 or so. And it's got the slower f2.8 aperture. It's not exactly slow, but you know, it's slower than f1.8 and you know, obviously f1.4. That is pretty much it for this review, guys. I really hope you got what you were looking for. And you know, if, if you felt like the review helped you out, if you could do me a favor and give me a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. And if you wanna be, you know, notified when I come out with new videos, new reviews and stuff, be sure to hit that subscribe and notification bell. Thank you for watching. Please be safe out there and have a wonderful day. I will catch up with you next time. Take care.